Good morning. We just sang, I will rise. And that little clip was about rising. And you know what? There were some here in their hearts were saying, yeah, you might rise, but I won't. I can't. I can't rise. But the Lord would say to you this morning that you can rise. If you will obey and trust me, says the Lord, your grave clothes will fall off. The things that bind you will fall to the ground. For I am the Lord your God and my word is true. It is eternally true. And if you will trust me and if you will obey me, the things that have bound you will no longer bind you. They will fall to the ground as you step out in a trust and obedience to my word and to my truth and to my spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you are faithful. We thank you, Lord, that you are faithful. And Lord, your word in John 11, 13, uh, John 11, 43 says, when Jesus had finished praying, he shouted, and he's shouting today to us, come out, Lazarus, come out. The man who had been dead came out. And some of you feel dead today because you are bound. You are not dead, but you feel dead because you are bound. The man who had been dead came out. His hands and his feet were wrapped with strips of burial cloth and a cloth covered his face. Jesus then told the people, untie him and let him go. And as that is a picture in the natural of someone bound, it is also a picture that spiritually many are bound because we do not live and trust in trust and obedience to the Lord our God. I want to speak today, it's part two of Living from the Spirit, titled Trust and Obey. Do you have trust issues? Do you first see the faults and failings and limitations of people and situations? Or do you see their strengths and applaud them? Do you wonder at the infinite possibilities of a situation for transformation, change or for better? Or do you see the negatives? Have you a spirit of obedience to the word of God? Are you quick to hear and respond? Only trust and obey. You know, there is a story behind the words of the song we're going to think about today. It's a song actually that I used to sing um, when I was growing up on the back of trucks when we used to go up to the camp meetings. Um, only trust and obey. And it's a, it, the words are very powerful. And you know, I thought it was... It's just a great thing to build. I was speaking on trust and obeying today, so I thought this was a great um, sort of just to hang it on, to hang on um, because it is a powerful scripture. It's a spa- scriptures, but it's also a powerful song. Th- you know, and we're going to look at this this morning, that we may be encouraged and strengthened in truth. We need to be encouraged and we need to be strengthened by truth. For the word says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Not good thoughts and opinions of others or things that are floating around, but you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Dwelling on truth and receive it, receiving it brings freedom. God by his Holy Spirit is bringing freedom to all who are seeking him and will receive his truth this morning. John Sammers, 1846 to 1919, composed a song called Trust and Obey. In 1887, following a meeting held by Moody, a young man stood up at an, actually it was after the service, and they were just having a testimony service. And he was speaking, and as he was speaking, it became clear to all the people who were listening to him that he really didn't know much about the Bible or doctrine. And um, his closing line, however, spoke volumes. All the believers that have been believers for many years and you believers alike were astounded. He said, I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to trust and I'm going to obey. Action of faith. Wow. Wow, that's just awesome. So Daniel Towers, who was in that meeting, was so struck by the power of those simple words that he quickly jotted them down and then delivered them to John, who developed the lyrics and turned them into a hymn that has encouraged many over the years to trust and obey. That must have been so powerful. It was, it's such a powerful truth. It imprinted so powerfully that they took it and, and developed it 
from the word of God and wrote a song. You know, Jesus is sinless and he chose to take the sins, the hurts, um, the hurts, sin causes and the sicknesses of people. He could and still can because he was sinless. He chose to overcome and broke through all the power of sin, all the power of your hurt, your sin and um, that goes with it and the spirit of dis-ease. You know, we often think of just diseases and uh, but you know this ease is something that's very powerful that it affects so many of us and it's a foul thing of sin Jesus can be trusted he is the faithful one Jesus became the faithful lamb of God you know I grew up with lambs lambs just gorgeous you feed them they're faithful you feed them they love you forever and you know I think that's why I love love them and and that you know but Jesus came he was faithful he was obedient he, you know and and he's trustworthy he came to take away our sins and hurts and burdens of life that weigh us down he's here today because he wants to take away your burdens he wants to lift those off you today he came to destroy he came to earth to destroy every power of the flesh every power of the world every power of sinful man and the devil himself who would try to bind you and destroy your life and mine but Jesus rose from the dead he carried he died from carrying all these things that come against us that things that come against you today he died for already he died um, from carrying our sin and even our dis-ease of life having overcome Jesus now sits at the right hand of the father and is interceding for you as you and I decide to trust and obey when we reach out and trust and obey him and we um, use our faith by these actions Jesus intercedes for us that simple faith step of trusting and obeying releases the power of the kingdom of God into your spirit soul and body into the whole you trusting and obeying Jesus destroys everything that would rise up against you choosing to trust and then obey Jesus sets you and I free Psalm 33 18 to 22 you know it's a little bit different because up there I didn't communicate my um, what version versions I was using but um, you have you can look them up in any version you like when you get home the eyes of the Lord are upon even the weakest worshippers who love him I love that because I'm pretty weak those who wait in hope and expectation for the strong steady love of God God will deliver them from death even the certain death of famine or whether it's a, at school when people rise up against you or at work or whatever it is, he will deliver you um, when there's no one to help. The Lord alone is our radiant hope and we trust in him with all our hearts. His wraparound presence will strengthen us. As we trust, we rejoice with an uncontained joy flowing from Yahweh. Let your love and steadfast kindness Overshadow us continually, for we trust and we wait for you. Psalm 84, 10 to 12. For just one day of intimacy with you, Lord, is like a thousand days of joy rolled into one. I'd rather stand at the threshold in front of the gate beautiful. I'd rather stand. That means that's almost like that's a waiting. So many of us feel like we're waiting. I'd rather stand and wait for you, Lord, um, and be ready to go in and worship you know when you when I get my answer what it is that you're speaking while I wait for you and worship my God then to live my life without you in the most beautiful palace of the wicked rather than choosing my own way and 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 finding a way because I don't want to wait anymore for the Lord is brighter than the brilliance of a of a sunrise wrapping him around himself around me like a shield he is so generous with his gifts of grace and glory. Those who walk along his paths with integrity will never lack one thing, not one thing that they need, for he provides it all. O Lord of heaven's armies, what euphoria fills those who forever trust in you. Trust David's word, words because they are not his words alone. They are spoken through him by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the word of God is 
trustworthy. Isaiah 59 to 11, the Lord God will help me and prove I'm innocent. My accusers will wear out like moth-eaten clothes. None of you respect the Lord or obey his servant. You walk in dark instead of the light. You don't trust in the name of the Lord your God. And you know, even if us, if we aren't innocent because we haven't been obeying and trusting God, if we will turn and obey and trust him, do you know what? He will protect us. He will lead us and make a way for us. Amen. It's so, so simple. Um, and, it's, and it's staying simple. That's why Jesus said, let the children come to me. Because he loved their heart. He loved the way they would hear instead of complicating everything and making it so difficult and then doing nothing. And modern man so complicates everything so that in the end he ends up so wound up with his own thoughts and so involved with himself that he doesn't do anything and he doesn't trust and walk with God and be obedient. Last week we talked how the word of God is a mirror and we can look and see our reflection and if there isn't any, the word is calling us to make some changes in our lives for then his glory, his brightness shines in and through our lives, bringing favour and we begin to understand more of his ways and see the power of his life in our own lives to bring effectual change to your and my circumstances that we are facing today. Building our trust, making it stronger than steel as we go through, as we do this. The chorus, trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. We used to sing this. We're out on the back of a truck, you know. Um, but you know what? It was so powerful it stuck with me today. And it's it's because it's truth. Truth sticks. If you look at it, truth really sticks. There's, there's an anointing on truth. Happiness comes from trusting and obeying Jesus Christ. Are you Where are you looking for your happiness? Where are you looking for your joy today? The truth is there is no other way to be happy because Jesus is the truth. He is life. It's found in all in him and he is the way of all life. To trust and obey are the actions of faith. And one of the things, you know, I thought one day I'll get my Christian life all together and then I'll just have a nice life. I could just sit back. Oh, there is a... Yeah, sit back here and go, wow, and view the world. It'll be great. But you know it doesn't work like that. We, faith is a currency of heaven and we must continually live and walk in faith and trusting and obedience are muscles of faith. And without faith, the word of God tells us it is impossible to please God. The Bible tells us also to know about Jesus Christ and then to choose not to trust and obey him. There is no happiness or joy and no peace. For la true lasting joy and happiness comes from his presence alone. You can't unknow what you know that you know. And that can be, you can look at that. I know when I, when I was young and I knew all about God, I walked with God from, very, from a very, had a revelation from a young girl. And then one day I thought, you know what, I don't like this. I don't like the people around me. I don't, you know, it, it's not happening quick enough. And um, I thought I'd just give God a helping hand. And so I thought, well, you can stay over there and I'll, I'll go and make it happen And because um, you're taking a wee bit long. And so I did. But, you know, you can't unknow what you know. And the thing is that when you walk away from God is sin and you reap the consequences. And it always come back to me. I'd go so far and then I'd stop. And I'd go, I can't go any farther because I, the holy fear of God would come upon me because I couldn't unknow what I know and you can't unknow what you know. And you know that is a blessing in disguise because it produces a holy fear of God that keeps you from going where you shouldn't, where even you, all you can see at the time is how, how much fun and how much life and, yes, all the good things, but you cannot see the hidden dangers and traps and snares that the enemy has set for you to destroy your life. Verse 2, not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt or a fear, not a sign or a tear can abide while we trust and obey. 
Trust and obeying are faith actions that are in line with the Holy Spirit, therefore releasing his power into our lives, which drives out doubts and fears and brings with it unexplained peace and rest. The cloud of despair can't settle on you. Anxiety and worry are driven away through trusting and obeying. Any dark things can't come and abide with us if we trust in God's goodness and obey his word. They will have to flee. Whatever you have been anxious about, come, trust. God knows and he is working on your behalf. Don't worry, but trust. Don't agitate, but rest. Remember, recall, know the great love, God. God is always talking to people to recall his goodness, recall his truth, because it keeps us. Remember, recall, know the great love God has for you personally, not for your next door neighbor or your mum or your dad or whatever, that the love that God has for you. For then the recalled love of God will cast away your fears and doubts and you will want to trust God and obey his word. Trust God's word, not every feeling you may have at a certain time. Three, not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he does richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Micah 2.13 says he's a breaker of all that comes against us when we trust and obey him. Number four, but we can never... But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. Wow. For the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. This is so true. Without trust and obedience, which is our faith action, the great gifts of God's goodness towards us are not fully released and appreciated. All on the altar we lay. He wants your fears today. What are you fearing? What are you worrying about? Your cares and concerns, any anxiety, depression, strongholds. These are things he wants. Your addictions, your, your anger, your hurt, your idols, your desire to be someone else instead of yourself and who God has caused you to be and the life he has given you. That wish to be someone else, he wants you to lay it down and embrace the life that he has given you. Jesus says, I'm walking into your life afresh today. Take a step back. Stand back and let me, says the Lord, take the wheel of your life. You're tired and weary and feel done. So let me lead you. Let me guide. Let me part the waters for you, for I will make a way just for you. Right through and out the other side into a bright new day, which the thoughts, for there are some who have in thoughts of suicide, it never gives, brings life. It never, it's, it's not even a way out. Nor are the affairs of their heart and relationships that God hasn't ordained. But the Lord Jesus says, if you will reopen your heart to me today, I will give you peace. I will give you rest. If you will take one step forward today and trust my goodness and obey my word. For through trust and obedience to Jesus and his word, we prove him over and over in our lives. And as we do it once, it, 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 do it, the first, it encourages us to keep stepping out. And our love for him grows and our desire for him will become burning hot. Your desire will become burning hot. Not verse 5, then in fellowship sweet, we shall sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side in the way, walking side by side. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Fellowship, sweet. Two people walking together. We walk by Christ's side. Listen to this. Not he by our side. It's not healthy for us to think he walks by our side. Because human nature can easily rise up in arrogance. And we expect God will follow us wherever we want to deviate and go. No, why? For he is leading us. Jesus said, come follow me, leave behind all else. Come and follow me. He is our shepherd, our guide. He is your shepherd, your guide, taking you through life. He wants to take you through life safely and he will. His ways are perfect. We need a heart that will sit at his feet, position ourselves to think less of ourselves 
to remember he is the creator and we are his created beings. Sit under his truth until every man, woman and child must come to this point. You know, there is no in advancement into the kingdom of God until we stand under the word of God with a heart to know Jesus Christ and to grow with him, his way, through obedience and trust. Trust and obey for there is no other way. For he determines how long that you will live. So let us think humbly of ourselves and not be lofty in our minds that we may be able to learn and have ears to hear what the, what the Spirit of God is saying. Obedience is an all-in thing, no playing about. Obedience means this is the way my Lord Jesus is going, so that's the exact way, the exact way I am going. Following hard after my Lord Jesus, for I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm washed in his blood, I'm clean, born again. His spirit has jump-started my personal spirit back to life. You know, before we are born again, we are dead. We used to jumpstart each other's cars out in the desert all the time. You know, you'd come across a car and jumpstart it and get it going. And, um, and it was literally a gift of life out there because there's not many people coming by. And Jesus has jumpstarted your personal spirit back to life. So your spirit is alive to him. You can sense him, know him, hear him. Your personal spirit is alive and can affect your body positively by releasing the life of God's spirit into it. God's Holy Spirit flowing and running through your personal spirit into your mind and into your body. You have a new heart given by God himself. So you actually have, you and I have new desires to do what is right. It's normal now for you and I. It's abnormal to want to do things that don't please God. Remember, my soul, my mind, will and emotions, your soul, has a new leader, director, since your personal spirit has come to life. There has been a role reversal. That's what happens when you become a Christian. For your spirit is now alive and living in tune with the Holy Spirit, Jesus' spirit. And your soul is to follow your spirit. So now my life is freer. Your life is freer. For my personal spirit has come to life with the double added blessing of the presence of the Holy Spirit. You can't help but feel lighter. For your soul, your mind, your will and your emotions is not leading your life anymore. And that's the thing God says, I want you to be obedient and to trust me so that you can truly be led by the spirit and not keep reverting back to the old way of being led by the soul. For your soul is not to lead your life anymore, but your spirit is to take up the slack and fill that position and with the Holy Spirit is transforming your mind, will and your emotions, your soul, reprogramming it. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? My soul is now being led. Your soul is now being led by my spirit with the added strength. You're born again spirit with the added strength of God's spirit within you. What a transforming life we have available. What a wellspring of purpose and vision we can have if we allow it to flow within us. It moves. It's forward moving. That takes me and you into our destinies where our soul is totally being renewed daily and our life is being lived to its fullness one day at a time in the power of the Spirit, overcoming all obstacles. Jesus. This hymn is a picture of communion with God in which fear and gloom have disappeared. Instead, delight and joy saturate this person's whole existence. However, this attractive life is only free to the surrendering soul and we must surrender total control of our lives to God and commit to trusting obedience to God's wishes. As the final verse says, what he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Not always easy, definitely impossible without trust and obeying. Remember the people in the Old Testament and, um, who had to go through the waters when they were taken out of Egypt and they had to face the waters. Oh my, you think about how scary that was. 
Yes, God, but God did you know, used Moses and he split them. But you think how scary that's coming up to those, those waters. He, you know, why didn't God say, just, you know what, I'll make a way around. You know, it might take 10 years longer, but we'll just... And they would have gone, yeah, that, that sounds really good. It's like us, isn't it? Yeah, make a way around. And God said, no, I'll take you through. And today God is saying to many of you, oh, you're not going around, I'm taking you through. Face it, go with me, trust and obey me, for I have and will make a way for you. Matthew eleven twenty nine says, Jesus said, my yoke of obedience upon you. Take my yoke of obedience upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest, a promise is there for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The things of obedience that the Lord will ask of you will be so much lighter than any choice you choose without him or with only a half-hearted attempt. Amos 3.3 3 says, Can two walk together unless they agree in a direction? When we walk with the Lord, when we agree with the Lord's direction for our life, when we submit to his direction, we will walk, live in the light, the blessing and the revelation and the power of his word. Are you walking with agreeance with God today, with his spirit? Are you living from the spirit and your mind and your emotions and your will? Is subservient to the Holy Spirit and your spirit. That's how we have it. Jesus manifested in our lives. There's no other way. There's no other way. So decide to trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in the knowledge of Jesus Christ the only saviour there is, the only one that can cleanse the deepest places of our heart and the only great healer. And this all comes through trusting and obeying him.